Look, I've been a fan of HTC for a long time now, right? I'm talking back before the iPhone or Android even existed. And it was for a good reason. HTC was one of the most innovative companies in the mobile space, and they actually played a significant role in shaping what the modern smartphone is today. But unfortunately for HTC, their market share has been plummeting year after year after year. And I don't think anybody would be surprised if one day HTC announces, hey, we're not gonna make smartphones anymore and we're only gonna focus on VR. So at least when it comes to smartphones, 2017 really feels like a make or break year for HTC. Of course, people were saying the same thing back in 2016 and probably the year before that, but the smartphone game is more competitive now than ever. So if you're an HTC fan, you were really expecting HTC to have something special up their sleeves in 2017. And what do we get? The first flagship smartphone of the year from HTC in the U. Ultra. If you can't already tell how I feel about the U Ultra, let's just say I'm not a fan. That's not to say that the U Ultra is a bad phone. It's not a bad phone, but at $750, it's definitely a bad buy. Now, I get where HTC was coming from in pricing this thing. They're using similar specs to the Google Pixel and the LG V20, so they probably figured, why not price it in that range? Well, HTC, if you're watching, here's why. The U Ultra just doesn't have a unique selling advantage strong enough that would make someone want to give up $750 for it in 2017. The V20 by no means is my favorite smartphone, but it at least has a wide angle rear camera, a removable battery, and a great DAC. The Pixel isn't the best looking phone out there, but it at least is always the first to get updated with security patches and the newest version of Android, and it also has an amazing camera with no camera hump in sight. The U Ultra, on the other hand, doesn't have any real advantages outside of the dual speakers and maybe the selfie cam, but considering that it came out almost six months after these other two, it's simply not enough to cut it. And no, I'm not gonna count the gimmicky second screen as an advantage, just like I don't count it as an advantage on the V20. Now, not making your phone better than the V20 and the Pixel, even though it came out six months later, is one thing, okay? But the U Ultra not only isn't better than those other two, it's significantly worse. The all metal build that HTC has been known for is gone, and instead, it's been replaced by an all glass design. I'm not gonna lie, okay? Okay, the design does look nice, good job on that HTC, but you could have at least added wireless charging like Samsung and LG did when they made the switch to glass. Whatever, okay, I get it. Not everybody cares about wireless charging, not everybody needs wireless charging, but what about the headphone jack? Yes, companies like Apple moved away from it, but at least when they did, they added water and dust resistance to their phone, and not even Apple, okay? Not even Apple had the courage to take away the headphone jack while also not providing an adapter in the box. One word. Courage. The U Ultra definitely runs on the bigger side with really thick bezels. That would have been okay if it had a battery that was as big as the one like on the Mate 9, but instead, HTC, you put a battery that's no larger than the one on the Galaxy S7. No, not the Galaxy S7 Edge, but the regular smaller Galaxy S7. And don't even get me started on that camera hump. Like, come on, HTC, it's 2017, really? And uh, last thing, the U Ultra should have been faster, right? I get that you had to underclock the processor to make up for the tiny battery and the gimmicky second screen. I also get that the Snapdragon 835 wasn't available to you at launch, but the U Ultra is expensive, all right? You're late to the game, so why couldn't there have been six gigabytes of RAM to make up for the older processor? I just, like, <laughs> honestly guys, I, I just don't get what HTC is trying to do with the U Ultra. I'm thinking that they're pivoting, like maybe going after the kind of people who only care about taking selfies. And there's definitely some evidence to support that strategy. Coca-Cola had its first major sales bump in 10 years after putting people's names on their cans. But I don't think even the most self-absorbed people out there are going to buy the U Ultra just for better selfies and being able to see the reflection in the back. Maybe at a lower price point like Oppo phones, but at $750, people could just buy an iPhone, which to many counts as a fashion statement in and of itself. Now, this doesn't mean I'm giving up on HTC, all right? I'm still a fan, I'm still holding out hope. HTC already confirmed that they'll be launching a new phone with a Snapdragon 835 later this year. But if HTC keeps making the same mistake time and time again, I think their days in the smartphone game are unfortunately numbered. What mistake are they making outside of the uh-oh known as the U Ultra? To me, it's that they keep trying to compete with Apple and Samsung at Apple and Samsung price points. They just don't have the money to market their phone like Apple and Samsung do, and they don't have the resources to invest in 
and R&D like Samsung and Apple do. In fact, I think the only companies that even have a shot at challenging Apple and Samsung at the high end are companies like Huawei, LG, and maybe Sony, as at least those companies have money coming in from different profitable divisions. And they also have unique hardware advantages producing either their own processors, their own screens, or their own cameras. HTC doesn't really have any of that, so I just don't see them competing at the high end price point. And there's nothing wrong with that. A company like OnePlus doesn't have those financial or hardware advantages either, but they've managed to carve out a nice little niche for themselves. They've got a pretty solid fan base, and I think HTC can do the same. I mean, people already are loyal to HTC or were loyal to HTC, but in order for HTC to kind of rebound, they're gonna have to give up the battle that they've been fighting since 2010 when they started losing the market share to Apple and Samsung. Like that market share is not coming back HTC, unless of course you have something big up your sleeve for your next phone, which in that case, can I have early access? Courage. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. What should HTC do? What will it take for them to win you back as a customer? Outside of that, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.